spiritual healing looks like spiritual healing is becoming very popular i go to a number of uh, workshops uh, seminars lectures uh, throughout the united states and i find that i meet at least one or two spiritual healers either in the audience or in those who are presenting their lectures and programs looks like it is very popular and people want to be healed through means other than having to go to a medical doctor what is spiritual healing and why is it becoming popular the answer can be found by first addressing ourselves to why do we need to be healed why are we sick why do we need a treatment either through medicine or through surgery or through spirituality to become well why are we unwell if we can find out why we are unwell then we can find the answer as to what kind of treatment would be best for us this question of why we are sick has been considered by philosophers scientists doctors for thousands of years and they have come up with different theories based upon their spe- special interest or their special philosophy to which they subscribed for example the medical student whether a contemporary medical student or one who studied medicine from a witch doctor 400 years ago thought that these ailments came from the different dispositions of the body from different viruses and germs that can afflict the organs of the body and that this was a physical phenomena that just because certain balances were not there in the body therefore we felt sick and so we needed to correct those imbalances and then we would be all right a lot of this medical system that emerged from this philosophy uh, of the material physicists or the material physicians uh, based itself on correcting the imbalances of the physical body in order to make it healthy the imbalances arose for various reasons they could be bad food bad environment bad relationships bad external habits bad external uh, outlook psychology there were many reasons given for why the balance of the human body could be upset and then it had to be corrected through various means which were called the process of healing it was after a long time that one physician in germany named samuel hanemann he discovered that we were sick not because of all these attacks from outside we were sick because the vital force within the body the living force took on a certain reaction to what was happening either inside or outside and therefore exhibited symptoms of sickness which were then treated as uh, symptoms of disease or ill health and medication or other systems were used to remove those symptoms and signs of ill health this man later on invented a new method to solve the problem of sickness and that was healing by the process of similarities this is still being used in some countries and sometimes in united states under the name of homeopathy homeopathy means where the pathos is similar to the pathos that exists in the natural state of sickness created by an external agent the principle is very simple if you take uh, the deadly nightshade plant which is sometimes called belladonna from which atropine is extracted take excess of it your face will become flushed red you will get fever you will get headache sometimes a headache of one side of the head you will be affected more on the right side this will happen to any natural person who takes an overdose of deadly nightshade what hanemann found was that if the vital force was afflicted with similar symptoms and deadly nightshade or belladonna was given in a small quantity the symptom disappeared and the person became healthy and so he found a new system of healing based upon the similarity of symptoms and hence it was called homeopathy or similarity of pathos similarity of disposition or feeling the other system was allopathy or altered pathos or a different feeling if you are hot give cold if you are low give high if you are high give something that lowers you so high blood pressure low blood pressure fevers they were treated like that then came future discoveries in more recent years 
about viruses and germs affecting us, bacteria affecting us, and we found the opposite of those so that those viruses, bacteria could be tackled through the allopathic method or the method of altering the pathos. This is how the material, physical physician has been able to heal the body. And this healing has been quite popular because it is uh, so objective, uh, does not involve our own participation. A doctor can give a prescription, we can go and buy it at a drug store and feel that this is all right for getting uh, rid of ill health and becoming healthy or healing ourselves. More recently, it has been found that the mind plays a very important role in our sickness. In certain analyses made uh, some years ago, about 20 years ago, it was found that 90% of the ill health is caused not by these external attacks upon the body, but by the internal attack of the mind. That most of them were psychosomatic. That means the body was being affected by the psychology of the patient. And then came the need to discover methods like suggestion, like placebo treatments, so that the psychology itself can correct its imbalance. As this went on, more and more studies were made to find out if there is any other cause of ill health. All these different theories of ill health and the methods of healing uh, were not fully satisfied. The spiritual student who was trying to study the real nature of the self, of the spirit or the soul, thought that this must be some error, some mistake in the functioning of the spirit in the physical body that was leading to the sickness and therefore sought a spiritual solution or a spiritual healing to that ill health. Recourse was had to the Eastern philosophy of karma, which says that when we are sick, we are not sick because uh, there is an attack from outside, we are sick because of our own past actions. We must have done something wrong in a past life that we are afflicted with ill health now. And therefore, we have to pay our karma by going through these processes of ill health. And so, we should cheerfully pay that. And if somebody charges us a fee, a physician comes and charges a fee, we owe it to that physician. We should pay quickly all his bills and get well. And this is the way we can pay off our karma and get rid of the sickness. In this process of the law of karma operating as the cause of sickness, the paying off of karma was the healing process which could get rid of sickness also. This karmic healing has been accepted as uh, an axiom of uh, the process of falling sick and the process of getting healed and has been used as a philosophy to expound the healing process in the Eastern tradition for a long, long time. The Western Students have looked to the East recently for several answers to their questions, including answers on spirituality. And so naturally, they addressed this question about healing also to the East. Of course, they found that the, in the East, there were yogis, swamis, mystics, men of enlightenment, men of uh, psychic powers, who could uh, just by giving a little piece of ash, cure very in, in, uh, incurable and chronic diseases. And so they felt that maybe the power of the mind, the power of healing spiritually was great. So they began to see if the same spiritual healing could be practiced here also. Thus the tradition of psychic healing or healing through forces other than the material medicines that we take to correct imbalances in the body became popular and people began to draw lessons from such sciences as the Ayurvedic system of India, which was prevalent for more than 10,000 years, according to the belief in India, and several thousand years before the birth of Christ, according to the texts available on Ayurvedic system of treatment, which was based upon use of herbs, use of uh, um, some metals, and use of uh, natural methods in conjunction with yoga to get rid of ill health. Similarly, from the Middle East, they found the Yunani system, the Greek system of medication, which also employed some psychology and some use of light herbs and uh, metals and minerals so that in a combination of them, we could heal the body that was sick. And both these systems became very popular and are still used in uh, those countries and are becoming popular recently in the United States as well. But the real question came up when somebody said, by spiritual powers alone, 
वन कैन हील द बॉडी बिकॉज स्पिरिचुअलिटी अफेक्ट्स दैट वाइटल पार्ट ऑफ आवर सेल्स द लाइफ प्रोसेस विच हैन ए मैन हैड एक्सीडेंटली डिस्कवर्ड एंड देयर फोर ए न्यू रैश ऑफ हीलर्स केम अप हु बिगैन टू यूज देयर ओन साइकिक पावर्स देयर ओन कॉन्शियस पावर्स देयर ओन सबकॉन्शियस पावर्स एंड थ्रू द बॉडिली मूवमेंट of the hands upon the patient's body they began to create what they thought were the processes of real spiritual healing i have met many of them some of them look healthy to me but most of them look ill and unhealthy themselves i have asked them this question how come you are spending so much time healing other people why don't you start healing yourself this was a question that was asked much earlier physician heal thyself the spiritual healer must be asked this question spiritual healer first heal yourself are you all right if you ask these spiritual healers this question in private and i have asked not just 10 or 20 or 30 of them hundreds of them across the globe in every country of the world why are you so sick and they tell me they have to do lot of healing and lot of that energy transfer that takes place lot of that karma that the patient has comes back upon them and they have to suffer for it i have seen very important well known spiritual personages who can perform open miracles they have told me that when they heal somebody through psychic powers they themselves become sick as if the karma which creates sickness if it is to be paid back by that patient and he does not pay and somebody else comes and offers all right i will pay for you then that person has to pay the karma and become sick what kind of spiritual healing is this this is just one person paying for somebody else it does not really heal nor are these people interested in uh, taking on the diseases and the illnesses of other people but the popularity of spiritual healing is growing because people feel it is easy does not cost any medical bills does not require visit to the physicians or going to hospitals and one can just pass a hand and uh, pray and uh, think well of a person and heal that person where did this myth come from that spiritually one can heal the truth is that this was no myth upon this earth from time to time have walked perfect living masters great enlightened beings human beings who though ordinary like us were extraordinary in their love in their awareness in their knowledge these masters these special beings when they came in contact with us their love was so overpowering it could flush out even the karma and the effect of karma upon our bodies they could actually come and destroy the karma from our life and thus heal us through their love and their higher awareness they did not come and and operate from the level of the psychic powers within they did not operate from the vital force they did not operate from the chakras to cure us they operated from love they operated from the highest level of consciousness which goes even above the mind goes above the law of karma goes above the akashic records goes above universal consciousness of the mind therefore these people when they came and touched us with their love we got healed and it is this secret which we are trying to use by calling the psychic experiences as spiritual experiences and calling the psychic healing as healing spiritually when a person uses love of the highest order like these mystics did and healed people by their contact then one does not take on any karma one is just destroying the very basis of karma which is the existence of a causal system in which one feels one has a free will and one can make determination of what to do and what not to do in fact how does the law of karma operate the law of karma operates on the notion that we are under an illusion of free will that we feel we can perform certain actions out of our own volition and when we make decisions based upon that notion of free will we add up karma it may be untrue that we have any free will but since we believe we have free will we believe we have karma so the effect of karma comes the whole package is an illusion free will is illusion karma is illusion the fact that we are unhealthy is illusion but we go through it like it is real all these look real free will looks real karma looks real the lack of health and sickness also looks real 
Therefore, when we try to operate within this illusion, we have to use illusion against illusion to get rid of an experience. But when these highly evolved mystics and saints who are above the level of karma, they come and they touch us in their own spiritual way through love, they destroy the very basis of that illusion which is creating karma, creating free will and creating disease and ill health. Therefore, that healing is something different. In the beginning, it was felt that uh, spiritual healing only meant healing by love, by a spiritual perfect master. It did not mean that anybody could just start using psychic powers and become a spiritual healer. Now people think that even if they have nothing in them, that they have never gone inside, they have not known who they themselves are, who have no access to love, they can also perform healing just by attending a few courses or workshop. This is not true. Spiritual healing means healing with the spirit, healing with the soul, not with the mind, not with the so-called planning intellect which says, I can do this and let me plan how to do it, let me make a decision how to do it. That part of us which plans and makes decisions, the mental intellectual apparatus cannot heal spiritually because it is not spiritual itself. Only the soul in a human being is spiritual. And only when the soul operates through love, intuition, joy and happiness can there be real spiritual healing. People have often asked me that if you feel that spiritual healing is really a spiritual phenomenon and arises from the soul, what can we all do? We have been in healing business for a long time. Can we, can we now change and do something that is more real? And my answer always has been yes. Give up healing through your psychic powers and start healing through love. Start healing through the spiritual force of your own soul which is expressing itself in the form of love all the time. We have a strange dilemma that when we operate in this physical world, we do it only through the mind. And the mind uses its ego and the intellectual apparatus to do everything. When we decide that the mind is not the real instrument of healing, that there is something else in, in us that ought to be doing the healing, we again use the mind to pull that something else out of us and use for healing. Thus, we play a mental game with ourselves and with the patients who we think are getting the benefit of our healing. If we really want to practice spiritual healing, we must first be our own spirit and not our mind. One cannot be a spiritual healer unless one has access to one's own soul or one's own spirit. Unless one can know who one really is spiritually, one cannot be a spiritual healer. Therefore, let us give up all this sham of being spiritual healers when all we are doing is just using certain psychic powers, using certain powers of the lower energy centers in the body, just using power of suggestion, power of the mental faculties. Let us give up all this and become real spiritual healers by healing with love. One who can heal with love alone is a spiritual healer. And only that person can be a spiritual healer who has realized his own spiritual self and therefore can experience real love and real spirituality. How does a person become a spiritual healer? How does a person know one's own spiritual self? One has to go to the spiritual masters in order to find one's own spiritual source, one's own source of soul, one's own spirit. Beyond the physical body, beyond the senses and beyond the mind. On our own, we cannot do it. Nobody has ever done it. Go around the world and see. Has anybody by thinking about it overcome the problem of the mind and the senses and the body and become spiritual? Has anybody by reading books become spiritual? Has anybody by uh, making pilgrimages become spiritual? Has anybody by making traveling and journeying around the world into various places become spiritual? Nobody has become spiritual by these means. They have only added on more superstition and more doctrines, more philosophies upon themselves and moved away from spirituality. Only those became spiritual selves who went within themselves and found that the body was not their real self. The senses were not their real self. The mind was not their real self that the soul was their real self. When they discovered within themselves the secret of who they really were, they became spiritual healers. And only by that process can one successfully perform spiritual healing. So if you want to have true spiritual healing, you have to look for somebody who is real, 
who is able to go within and find spirituality and then heal. But this is not possible unless one has met with and got directions and training from a spiritual master. What should one do in the meanwhile? There are such few spiritual masters of such perfection whom we call perfect living masters. We do not know where to find them. Somebody in the East told me, you cannot find a spiritual master because if you could find him, you don't need one. He is like an ordinary person and his extraordinariness is only experienced through our own readiness for spiritual knowledge. And that is why there is that saying in India, when the chela is ready, the guru appears. When the disciple is ready, the master appears. Which means the master comes into our life and we are ready. How can we find such masters? The process of being ready may take lifetimes, may take years. We do not know how long it takes because our mind has deluded us. Our senses have taken us astray. We have become victims of the five pernicious vices that afflict us in everyday life. And therefore, we are not able to overcome this problem of uh, being involved in this world on our own and we can't find a master. How can we become a spiritual healer? The answer given by spiritual masters is, if you cannot find spirituality yet within yourself and you are in the process of healing, then follow the method which actual spiritual healers do. That means heal by love. Don't heal by power. Don't heal by psychic power. Heal by love. There's a big difference between healing by power, which involves human ego, and healing by love, which involves humility and absence of ego. If you find a person trying to heal by using excessively the egoistic I, I can heal you, I have this power, I am going to do it, I'll work for you. That person is not doing spiritual healing at all. On the other hand, if the person identifies with the object of love, the beloved, the patient, the one who, for whom compassion has put him in such a state that he forgets himself and becomes the patient, then that person can heal. The most significant sign of love is that you start identifying with the beloved. The rest is all attachment. The rest is only involvement in emotions and infatuations. Real love is when you can identify with the other to the exclusion of your ego. When you do not know who that I is, but you know who the other person is, who the beloved is, if you have this identification with the other person, then you can truly say that you are having an experience of love. This experience of love can take us into a state where we forget the I and in identification with the other, heal spiritually. Until we have actual spiritual knowledge of our own self, till we find out who we spiritually are, we want to continue our spiritual healing, we should pretend the experience of love. One Indian mystic has said beautifully that love and devotion is very difficult to acquire because it is not a mental exercise. But if you haven't yet experienced love and devotion, pretend you are having that experience. And the pretension of being identif identifying with somebody else, of actually identifying with somebody else, will give you a feeling of love like nothing else. Therefore, till we find our own spiritual truth and our soul, we cannot really become a spiritual healer. But we can have a makeshift arrangement of healing people who are in suffering, out of compassion, by pretending that we are in love with them. How do we pretend we are in love? By doing the same thing which one who is actually in love would be doing, which means identifying, identifying with that person. This identification process is the key of love and the key of healing by love or the key of spiritual healing. If you have a feeling for somebody, put yourself in the place of that somebody. Think you are that somebody. Consider you are not there that what you are thinking of, what your feelings are, are the feelings of the person in whom you are concerned, for whom you have love, for whom you have concern. When you can identify yourself so much with the other person, then at that time you are truly experiencing the pretended love that I speak of. That person will get the benefit of healing even if you do nothing else except identification. There have been cases 
Their people have just gone to a sick person and listened patiently without saying anything and just listened to what the other person is saying and the person has been healed. Such healing through love would be called proper spiritual healing. So I would conclude by saying that the psychic healing, tantric healing, healing through psychic and mental powers is not true healing. The real healing is when you can experience love for somebody and heal. That is spiritual healing.